Hey there. So um, I want to take a little bit moment to uh, kind of give like a video overdue of uh, some of these assignments. I know I kind of did that in a video uh, already, but it was kind of brief because my battery was dying. So I wanted to give uh, a little bit more uh, detail on that. And you know, the purpose of this is really to give like a better idea of things that I think students often struggle with and, uh, you know, tend to fall into some pitfalls and traps and also to give you guys like a reference. So that's what this video is about. So first thing I want to talk about, right, is that, um, you know, I think one of the hardest things that students have is that they typically don't write, uh, you know, incrementally, right? And so it's very, it's very tempting to put off everything, especially if you're balancing other classes and other real life responsibilities, right? There's a tendency to kind of like put off each assignment into the last minute, right? And instead of working on just like a little bit a day, like a sentence or two, or, you know, doing um, like one small like task related to an assignment, instead what ends up happening is that students create like these sort of like jumbo assignments because then now it's all have to be done and there's like a panic and anxiety and you know maybe uh the quality or the effort that the student's capable of uh is not uh present in their work so let's i wanted to talk about a few little things that i think can help and also you know to give some advice about the way to do it so the first part is is that um, I think, you know, one first thing people should do, right, is to be proactive. You know, I post the assignments well ahead of time about what's expected for each one, as well as the rubrics. So I would start, you know, early on looking at the guidelines and the rubrics and then starting, you know, figuring out how you can make changes um, and start working on it, right? You know, I think the other part too is like, because I have the assignment guidelines there, you can kind of know like where the class is going to know what I expect you to know um, in the long term. And so you can kind of start formulating that. Um, it'd also be good because, you know, if there's something on the guidelines or in the rubric that seems unclear, it puts you in a position to ask me for help, for guidance, um, you know, and if there's something in class that's unclear or you need, or you've been working ahead and you've noticed that this is something you're struggling with, I can then, um, you know, kind of bring that up and, and address the issue. So that's the first thing to do is like kind of be more proactive, look at the assignments, look at the rubrics ahead of time, identify you know, some strengths and pain points related to it and move on. Uh, the second part that I think what ends up happening is that uh, students have a tendency to like kind of have like a circular reasoning, right? So like I'll give an example, right? So if we looked at peer review assignment one, um, you know, you're asked to, uh, I'm looking at this on my screen here, um, outline the importance of studying theory, okay? Um, and then listen to find four criteria of a good theory. So these are ways that we judge whether or not the theory is correct or not. That's what a criteria is, right? So it's a way of like assessing something. So, you know, the thing that like, might come up is, I, is that if we, you know, have a history of looking at parsimony, um, common themes that will come up is that parsimony is in the same paragraph as like comprehensiveness in the book and those people will define parsimony as comprehensiveness um, when there are two different things right so there's like a the, you know I think it's like maybe they look at the like section heading and they don't read the paragraph or they don't read it uh, very deeply and what ends up happening is that um, it, it ends up being incorrect because you know students didn't can't differentiate that the other part is, is that I think sometimes like people will write, and I think this is because they're in a hurry. Um, you know, they end up writing like, uh, the parsimony of a theory is parsimony. And, you know, so you've told me parsimony is like what it is, right? But you, but there's no like definition of like what the term means or an explanation of what that means. When I'm grading and evaluating something, right? Um, you know, I want to look for, you know, true like student mastery and understanding. And so in something like that, uh, the things that jump out to me are going to be ones where uh, students like are able to take a correct term, right? They define it correctly, right? Um, so they're not confusing with something else. They're not like defining it by its own term, right? Um, and then they're able to explain what that means and why it's important, right? So all of those elements for each part of a theory is uh, like what's really key, right? So... So any, any part of an assignment that you're working on in this class, whether it's for a peer review assignment or whether it's for the term paper, I think it's really important that students, um, you know, normalize and get used to the idea that, um, 
you know, you need to list, define, and explain everything. I, I, not, a, I, this should be written in a way that's like, is it, like, because you're trying to tell me that you understand and know the material, you shouldn't assume that I know it, right? So you should be writing, you know, maybe like if you're writing to like your mom or your sister or whoever, right? Um, you know, write it in a, in a simple, clear, concise kind of way where you're defining what terms mean and then you're explaining them to me. Don't, don't assume that I know, um, and don't write in that way. And it's like, well, of course you know it. Like, I do, but like, don't write in that way because I'm looking to see, mainly because like, the best way that you can usually show that you understand something is by teaching it, right? So if you have to teach it to someone, chances are you're usually mastered pretty well. So when you're writing like for each of these assignments, I want you to basically teach me about the theories or teach me about the criteria to define a theory or a uh, correlate. I think it's gonna put you in a better position to do that. So write the paper as if you're teaching someone about this, right? I think the, so if we look at assignment two, right? Um, so in this one, we, you know, we ask for correlates or, and, or, which is sometimes known as like patterns that we see to crime. And, you know, sometimes like students will be like, well, you know, uh, gender is a correlate of crime. Okay. And, but that, that'll be like all they say, right? So they don't tell me necessarily like what they mean by gender, right? Or like biological sex is like a, you know, a more appropriate term. Um, so they don't tell me what like the pattern is or they say, Biological sex, you know, is men commit more crime, right? Okay, but that I'm also looking for things like what kinds of crimes do they commit more of, right? Because men don't necessarily commit more prostitution, right? It typically is a female offense. Um, you know, men typically have fewer incidences of shoplifting, but that tends to be more female driven, right? But men are much more likely to be violent um, and engaging it. I think the other part that ends up happening too is that, you know, with the uh, correlates of crime kind of part, um, like students start telling me like why the pattern is, or they start giving me reasons as to why, you know, maybe men are more uh, like, you know, aggressive or more likely to commit violent crimes, right? And that's not what I'm interested in that part of the assignment. I'm more interested in just telling me what the pattern, what things do we see in it. I don't necessarily wanna know the why component. Like, just tell me what is the pattern? How does it shape? You know, how does it develop? What kinds of crime types? What's different? That's what I'm interested in. So the more that you can tell me, as the more what you can give me for each kind of pattern of crime that we uh, discuss, I think you're gonna be in a, a better position to succeed. Um, and so I would, you know, really uh, normalize that kind of thing. So we're going to stop the video here. And then in the next one, we'll talk about assignments three and four. They're the same assignment, but they're just flipped. Um, and we'll, I'll kind of like go over some details and expectations on that.